Okay, so a Nintendo Wii is still a very cool piece of technology, but it's even more cool when it is portable. So let's go. The Nintendo Wii, it's still a system that I personally really like. And it had a lot of shovelware, a lot of family games, but still had a lot of possibilities. And when it comes to, let's say, playing it on a handheld, you can play GameCube games and you can play Nintendo Wii games. And even if you push it a little bit farther, you have the option to play even more some retro stuff on it. So when it comes to the Wii, we have a lot of potential to it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at Nope, it's not a PlayStation 2 portable. This time we're going to take a close look at the Nintendo Switch a Wii Portable because this device is quite interesting. So basically, there are some pros and cons to this device. I'm also going to do a quick teardown just to see what actually we're going to get. How good is the quality? Because these things are like freaking expensive. Because what they did, they slapped the freaking Wii inside and handheld. How freaking cool is that? So recently I picked up this device just to show you here on the channel because I was really curious and is this thing really worth your money? So first of all this thing is gigantic. It comes with a gigantic IPS 8 inch display. And already shown you a similar product like this when it comes to PlayStation 2 portables. And there we're going to get the first issue. So it's not the same, don't get me wrong, there are some minor differences. But when it comes to shell, you look at the ready one, you're comparing it with my hands. This thing is like freaking massive. And that is one of my big issues with this thing. So they call this thing the Wii Portable, but is this thing actually portable? <clears throat> yeah, not really in my opinion. It's still like a fun thing to bring with you, but it does have a lot of cool features. You can also use this thing actually like a Wii. So let's do a quick overview. So first of all, here at the top you can see we're also having a built-in sensor bar, what I understand of the creator. We're going to get the idea over here. When you're turning it on, you can see it gives an indication how full or empty the battery is. We're going to get a D-pad and the D-pad itself over here feels very nice. Two analog sticks, A, B, X, Y. Going to get select start and an escape for going back to the menu, for example. All right, so let's talk about the D-pad quickly because with most of these freaking portable devices that you buy from AliExpress or other places, the D-pad is a really big problem. But I was surprised to see this thing is very responsive. It feels quite sturdy and overall, I'm very pleased with it. Okay, so the analog stick are comparable with the PlayStation 4 and I mean like the way how it looks. It also comes with the click because we're going to need it and here we're going to get a 3D printed button with a nice click and here we're having the left speaker. So at the right side, what are we going to get actually? I already mentioned like we're going to get two 3D printed buttons over here. We're going to get again the joystick PlayStation 4 lookalike, A, B, the X and Y button and the press itself. It feels not the same like of course like an original Nintendo product, but okay. But yeah, the bottom part, there is going to get really interesting. So what you're going to get actually is like we're having the port, an AVL port. So we can use this thing actually like a game system. Input for the power supply, on and off switch, and there we're going to get an audio jack. Okay, so at the top we're going to get four shoulder buttons, two on each side. And there are some minor differences when it comes to, let's say, the thickness of the button but when it comes to the height they are exactly the same so when you're holding it eh, it's okay but when you're looking at the other buttons you're going to get the menu button over there the same clickies micro switch beneath it then we're going to get volume control and an extra button over here in combination with the usb flash drive that we can put in there on the usb port so adding your games so another big bummer is that when you're looking at the back it still has the same freaking playstation 2 logo so what do I mean with the same? Okay, so this version is not 100% the same like the 8 inch, let's say PlayStation 2 portable beast I've reviewed. So there are some similarities, but the casing itself is the same. And beside the logo at the back that I find quite annoying, it's also like it's still having a lot of similarities. So the D-pad over here of the Wii is different. And I must say that I really love the D-pad over there. But when you're looking at the joysticks, it's almost the freaking same. They added a tiny logo over there. And of course, with the Wii, we're going to get for the sensors. But that's it, like, it's exactly the same. And also, if you're going to turn it around, you're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. You can see over there, like, it's exactly the same mold. And, yeah, <sighs> it's a little bit of a bummer. 
Okay, so let's play a short gameplay. And yeah, playing Wii games on the go on an 8-bit device is quite a unique experience. You can already hear like the audio is not bad at all. So if you just need to play games like this, you only need to use the analog stick or the D-pad, it's all fine. But when you're going to need to use the shoulder buttons, this thing is absolutely not comfortable. And I need to put my hands in like very ranged positions, like, oh, this is not good at all. <laughs> and I'm getting my ass whooped here, man. But when you're looking at the display itself, they are using very nice IPS displays because the view angle is like really good and it is like a vibrant, colorful display. So when it comes to the display, that is okay. But the way how they edited this to the handheld, that is not really okay. <clears throat> But when you're looking at the quality of the casing, it's similar to all the other ones I've reviewed. And I mean like with the other ones, it's like they're having like the same mold of course. Something like 3D printed, it's still very rough. And you can see this thing is not, let's say, having the perfect paint job. But it is better than the first generation I have seen. Because the first handheld I received was in 2020, if I recall it correctly. And it had a really lousy paint job. So the paint job and overall, I must say, I'm very pleased with the result. So another thing I really don't like about this handheld, because the size is like gigantic, but it is like super freaking heavy. 795 grams for a handheld. Like, oh my gee, like you don't need to go to the gym more because you go to get some beef cake arms, yeah. All right, so let's get myself a screwdriver. I just want to see how this thing looks in the inside. So I already shown you very briefly, like the display is loose. Like, don't know what's happening here. But that's not okay. So what we're going to do is removing all the tiny screws over here. I personally don't like the way they added like the two shells together because when you're putting like the seven inch model of the PlayStation one, you're normally going to get two gigantic parker that goes over here, the left and the right, and it holds both shells together. So in the end, like I'm not a big fan of the shell in many ways, the size, the way, how uncomfortable it is and how freaking heavy, but let's open it up. And they're using a lot of these tiny screws and I think if you're going to do them disassembly for a couple of times the holes will be like completely destroyed so you will never get your screw back in. So the way they added this, it's how they added all the components when looking at the screws and the two shells, that is a part I don't like at all. I personally prefer the 7 inch model and I did also open up the other portables one like the PlayStation 2, the new one I've reviewed and those were like having oh, quite okay, nice shell and the way how they assembled everything so that's it so let's be very gentle and let's open it up oh man when it comes to these devices you always need to be super careful just to see which direction i can open it up all right so this is the way how it needs to go okay so they're using a lot of ribbon cables there is a lot of room for basically like open it up so i'm very glad they did so okay so this is what you're going to get in the inside so let's to basically first a quick view of the over, like the top part and then the bottom one. But the reason I wanted to review these things on the channel is just to show you what you're going to get. And I must say like I also find it quite fascinating to see what they can make. So the first thing I'm noticing when I'm looking at the motherboard compartment and the batteries, that like there only are three batteries inside. I can recall there are like four with the PlayStation 2 portable. I know there's going to be a big of an issue, but just want to point it out. So I see that they did some modification with the main board itself and I mean like they did need some cut down here and there but they are using a very big shell so I'm guessing they don't need to do a lot of modification to the main board itself okay so over here we're going to get the hot glued cooling element and with the fan and the fan is quite loud then we're going to get I think it's a control board that they added with some hot glue and a lot of special tiny wiring and they hot glued everything so that's going to be not a problem then we're going to get this gigantic ribbon cable that goes to the bottom part let's take a close look at the bottom part the bottom part here we're going to get the pcbs for the joysticks and yeah here we're going to get the ribbon cable that comes from the control board at the top part here we're going to get the pcb for the lcd they also made a special 3d printed bracket over there but it's still like there is a lot of movement in the display itself Oh, here you can see one of the freaking 3D printed buttons is falling out. Yeah, these things are just loose inside. There's no screw holding them back. It's like the shell. Everything will be clamped together. So a lot of hot glue madness going on here and there, but it is not really bad. Not like in a negative way. So you can see, and 
that's the reason I wanted to open it up. It's just there is a lot of work that goes into this. Like soldering everything, the soft mod, modifying the mainboard, all the stuff that they need to do to get this freaking thing into a handheld mode. And there are a lot of different YouTubers making devices like these, and some are even better like the other one. Like this is like a mediocre build, it's not really special in my opinion, and to be honest I'm not really pleased about the result in general. I'm not going to let's say bitch about it because I cannot do a better job than this. But the thing is like, I just want to give you a look at it. And yeah, the soldering, in my opinion, it's not really bad. And again, yeah, I cannot do a better job if you ask me. So when you're going to get into this portable device and you're picking one up, yeah, you need to find your best creator because these things are handmade. And in my opinion, it's kind of messy when it comes to the cables. There are some cables here and there, I'm thinking, hey, you can do a better job when it comes to cable management. So there is this cable over here that that's basically laying here. Like these things are super thin. Oh man, they are super fragile. And yeah, I'm always like kind of <laughs> afraid to open it up. But yeah, this is what you're going to get in the inside. So let's close it up. So guys, what do I think of this Wii Portable? I'm just going to be honest, I don't like it a lot. The first thing I don't like is the shell itself. I don't get it why they put it in the shell of the PlayStation. Because for me, that's what it is. So, the build quality is not the best. It's still very sturdy material, but if you drop it, oh yeah, it will break, absolutely. The thing is like, there are some cool features on it. You can play some Wii, GameCube, even some virtual console if you want to. You need to have a lot of tinkering with the software if you want to get it to work. But overall, this is like an adventure that you just need to find just fun to do. Because it's not something you pick up and just play. You need to have a lot of tinkering and a lot of knowledge about the software. Nevertheless, I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. Hit that little bell. Become on the Wicked family. And I will see you in the next video. It's a time for the portable time.